Hi, I'm Jude Terzinski. I own Hooky Outriggers and Surf Skis and Surfboards in California. And uh, we build surf skis, uh, custom, and outrigger canoes. And uh, we're just entering the surfboard market. And uh, we do it entirely custom on an individual basis. And frequently our customers design their own equipment. And uh, we build it just the way they want it. The S1X, the original S1X, pretty much changed the shape of things back in about the about 2003, 2002, mm -hmm. and uh, we designed with using help from a computer. We designed a, a hull that got uh, maximum speed, and then we uh, tweaked it enough to get some extra stability out of it, primary stability. Um, listening to surf ski paddlers, they, they all wanted a little bit more primary stability compared to what was going on at the time. And uh, so we worked out maximum speed and increased stability until we saw it affecting speed, and, and that's the hull we came up with, which was the S1X. Okay, so with primary stability, how can I see that on a kayak? What am I looking for? That's the, that's the area about five degrees left and right of uh, completely vertical. And uh, it gives a paddler a sense of uh, confidence to apply more power. Uh, if that boat just doesn't want to stay vertical, during their stroke, they end up cutting back on the power and even sometimes uh, bracing, a low brace, or using a paddle uh, bracing stroke. So uh, that was our aim. The, the, the paddlers were asking for a little bit more primary without a, a much of a loss in, in speed. And we had to aim for that. And uh, it seems that our shape variations of our shape have now shown up all over the world and the concept that you can get a little more primary out of a very fast round hull um, has spread. Um, previous to the early 2003 uh, seats were a bit high um, two and a half inches off the bottom of the hull footwells were high on the sides uh, because the feet were spread apart and uh, paddlers at the time thought that they could gain some stability by keeping their feet apart. Um, we flew against that and put the feet close together and that allowed us to drop the feet to the bilge at the very bottom of the hull. So in, in this case here you can see how thin the hull is at this point and that the uh, actual bottom of the footwell is resting against the actual bottom of the hull. You can see just how uh, tight that is, getting every last bit out of it. And uh, the seat is a deep well seat, and you can trust me, it's... Uh, just about on the bottom? It's, it's yeah, <laughs> it's only that far from the bottom. How far was it used used to be off the bottom? Uh, it's uh, previous boats that were very popular uh, that were about this far off the bottom. And and lowering it to the bottom gives you a bit more stability. Uh, quite a bit more. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Every every few millimeters uh, okay. is a noticeable difference in stability. Okay. And uh, our round hull got, was just a little bit flatter in the mid part of the hull. Um, with all of that, we, we gained quite a bit of primary stability. Um, we didn't increase the beam of that type of boat. We just kept it the same beam at 17 inches. And uh, we kept the same uh, uh, overall length. Um, we did put much more of a plow, plumb bow on it, on it to uh, increase the waterline length. The plumb bows of uh, earlier days were, uh, were not as plumb as this. They were swinging back 
and the water line was beginning approximately here. And we lengthened the water line without lengthening the boat by bringing this plumb bow much more straight down and bringing the water line closer to its uh, full length. And in most cases, a, a longer water line, a uh, longer water line with narrower ends uh, generally runs faster in light conditions. And uh, so we got a lot of flat water speed out of it. So most of the paddlers back in 2000, 2003, um, weren't asking for a lot of secondary stability. They really didn't worry about rocking that boat beyond five degrees. Um, they felt that they could get it back up to level uh, by a brace. And uh, so when we designed the uh, original S1X, we didn't put much beam in it. Um, secondary stability increases greatly with uh, extra width and uh, it wasn't necessary. People really didn't need secondary unless they were just getting started in the sport. And, and so uh, for those people who were getting started in the sport, the novices, um, we made other models like the S1R, which uh, is a, uh, an inch and three quarters wider than the S1X. And uh, that extra beam affords a noticeable increase in secondary for those people and uh, uh, a slight increase in primary. Okay, so I guess the compromise then is how do you get uh, maximum secondary stability in a fast boat? The, I, I kind of, recently in the last couple of years, I, I, I considered that. How do I get paddlers who need maximum stability um, but they still want to go fast because you know the wider you make that hull the slower it's going to go and my method of cheating towards that is with the, uh, the gull wing that I created here oh yes it weighs nothing and it mounts to the boat uh, basically working like working like a set of uh, training wheels. Okay. And uh, it is removable from the boat. Um, it can be mounted onto any surf ski. I haven't come across a surf ski yet that it can't be mounted to. Some uh, reinforcement of the aft deck has to be done from the inside of the boat. But uh, we have a pair of universally fitting feet that go down onto the deck. The wing screws onto those feet and the wing tips ride several inches above the water when you're fully vertical. They don't drag in the water. It doesn't slow the surf ski down. If the paddler begins to roll, the wing tip touches the water at about this angle and uh, braces for the paddler so he doesn't have to brace. He just keeps pulling. The harder he pulls, the more stable he becomes. So that was my way of uh, getting past the wider, slower hull for those brand new to surf ski paddling and those people who really didn't want to buy one boat then three months later buy a faster boat and yep. uh, they'd be instantly on a pretty fast boat. Okay. The, the S1X and similar 17-inch wide surf skis have pretty much maxed out their secondary stability simply by the d definition of their beam. Um, you have to go wider if you want more secondary stability, and, uh, and that requires getting a different hull altogether. So and what's the difference between secondary stability and primary stability? What's more important to me, I guess? Uh, as a beginner paddler, you haven't got the bracing skills. You haven't got a low brace or a, or a high brace when you stroke the paddle. Um, you're really depending a bit more on the beam of the boat to hold you up. Um, you want something that keeps you from rolling too far. 
So uh, therefore you want to go a little wider. You definitely would want to go a little wider if you want to avoid something like the gullwing. Yeah. Um, we have that in the S1R model and uh, uh, it has among the what, what are called the entry level or novice level surf skis, um, we have pretty good primary and pretty good secondary on it. And what width is your? 18 and 3 quarters inches wide. It's about a quarter of an inch narrower than the typical surf ski in the novice or entry level surf ski, uh, but it actually has a bit more primary than most and uh, equal or enough secondary. Um, a novice paddler feels fairly secure because it does have a great deal of primary stability. So you've got the primary by lowering the seat as far as possible, yeah. putting the feet together and again low. Uh, again front. keeping the, the cockpit low. Um, paddlers uh, who need the seat higher or, or, or want the seat higher so they get a, a better leverage on their stroke, um, they pad the seat up mm -hmm. and uh, it's a lot more comfortable with some sort of seat padding in there anyway. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, if you want to uh, get more leverage, you just pad the seat up. Okay. 